Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. This video is a continuation in the series that I'm doing going from Earth to Ganymede, one of the moons of Jupiter. So hopefully you've already seen the first part. If not, obviously, please go back and uh, watch that part first. In the last part, we took off from the Carl Sagan Space Center using the HCLV launcher to get the XR2 into orbit. And the HCLV is a very cool launcher. If you haven't checked that out, I would highly recommend it. It's a fantastic launcher uh, all around, and it's especially good for lifting uh, the XR2 up into orbit. I think that's going to be one of my uh, preferred ways of getting the XR2 into orbit these days, as opposed to you know taking off from the runway. I just kind of like using the launchers. It's pretty neat. So once we got the XR2 up into orbit, we separated from the HCLV and set up Transex so that we could rendezvous with the Aero Freighter that I already have in orbit, uh, in a very high orbit. It's about uh, 13,600 uh, kilometers, give or take, above the surface of the Earth. And we're going to rendezvous with the Aero Freighter and then head off toward Jupiter. So let's go ahead and get jump back in and... Uh, get things going f1 or rather my macro key to switch cameras and let's unpause here and uh, let's see so in the at the end of the last video we set up our communication equipment so that we would have the frequency for the the long range uh, part of the aero freighter and then the docking port at 124 and let me just double check that real quick so vessel AR01, yeah, 123 even for the transponder and 124 even for the port. Okay, just wanted to double check to make sure that I had that right. Okay, now according to Transex, we're going to encounter the uh, Aero Freighter at 57340, so it's still today, and that's going to be 7871, so we've got to go forward by you know, that distance, which I'm, I'm thinking we're going to go all the way around the Earth one time, and it looks like we're going to meet up over here. Now, there's a good chance that somewhere along the way we'll want to do basically a mid-course correction of sorts. That may sound strange, since we're doing a, a rendezvous and we're not going to, you know, uh, Mars or something like that just yet. But since there's so much distance being covered... Uh, we may actually have to do a, a, a mid-course correction as part of our rendezvous. So let me bring up Orbit MFD over here just to check things out. Projection ship, distance, PEA, APA, how we want. Frame of reference doesn't really matter, but it's currently set to EQU. Periapsis is 2,100, so we're well above the uh, surface. We don't have to worry about accidentally crashing into the uh, surface. Let's target the spacecraft, the AR-01 the Aero Freighter, and you can see basically its orbit, you know, this is the yellow line, and it's over here, so we're going to come around, and we've got a much lower orbit, so we're going to go very fast around the Earth and come back around, and by the time we do that, the Aero Freighter will have had time to come around on its own. So without further ado, let's warp time forward. Go out to 100 here, keeping an eye on the closest approach, and you can see that it's changing. And it changes, again, you know, the whole math model stuff that I've talked about so many times. Transex doesn't model multiple bodies. Um, so basically, any influence from the sun, any, uh, but more so the influence from the, the moon, that's the reason that our closest approach doesn't hold. If the uh, solar system only consisted of the Earth and our vessel, then this should, in theory, never change but it's changing because the moon's tugging on the earth a bit and the sun has some effect as well but it's mostly the effect of the moon but as we're coming around it's coming back down so i'm not going to worry about doing any adjustment so we'll maybe speed things up here a bit and the closest approach now changing a little but it may wobble in and out so we won't, we won't worry about it especially since it's such a low number And we're up to 20 meters, no big deal. Going forward a bit farther. Okay, we're getting reasonably close to that time. Again, the time is going to be 7, 8, and we're at 7, 5, basically. So let's bring up VOR, VTOL. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, not VOR, VTOL, but docking. 
and uh, we're still a ways out. We can even switch the docking HUD at this point. Go forward a little farther, get closer to the aero freighter. It's again the aero freighter is represented by that blue line, and we're slowly gaining on it, or I guess maybe it's gaining on us. And here briefly we should see the uh, dock MFD update and yeah there we are so we're 800 kilometers out and we're moving at quite a good pace you can see the difference in our velocities is uh, 1,000 over 1,000 meters per second and that is simply because our orbits are so different uh, if our the aero freighter is in a circular orbit you can see its eccentricity is zero across the board but our interest our eccentricity is 0 0.4 so we have a very elliptical orbit, so our velocities are very different. Uh, our velocity is currently 3,493 meters per second, but the velocity of the aero freighter is 4,464 meters per second. So we have a very different velocity, so it's going to require you know, a braking burn that's uh, you know, going to be quite a bit. And we'll use burn time calculator to help us calculate exactly what we want to do on that. Rotation. Let's uh, rotate toward the aero freighter, although I don't think we're close enough to see it. In fact, I'm almost certain we're not. But we'll rotate around. We're actually rotating the wrong way. And there we go. There's the velocity vector. So pointing right at the velocity vector, we'll actually... Uh, since since this is going to be such a large burn, instead of using the retro engines facing forward, facing toward the positive velocity vector, we'll go backwards. We'll go the other way around and use the main engines. It'll be more efficient to do that. So a little bit of, a little bit of uh, rotation, and we'll spin things around. And there's the negative velocity vector. And now I'm going to bring up burn time calculator to help me determine how much time I need, how much distance I need. So burn time calculator and DV. Let's bring up, oh, there it is, Transex, and oh, we already had it. 1027 is going to be our DV. Using the full power of the main engines, as indicated here, we're going to need 36 kilometers to eliminate that velocity. You can see we're moving in quite quickly, so it will not take very long to get there. Translation. In the meantime, we'll see if we can just do a tad bit of translation to bring this down just a little bit more, which doesn't even matter, but why not? And now we've got it all the way down to just, you know, a couple meters, so we're going to run right into it. And that's perfect. Okay, so again, we need uh, 36.3 kilometers, but we'll probably start the burn at uh, 37 kilometers. That way we come to a complete stop with a half a kilometer to spare. So we don't need uh, Transex for anything else at this point. Let's bring up the docking MFD. It's a little bit more useful to us. And we'll warp time forward till we're 30 some kilometers out watching the distance indicator here. And when we get a little bit closer, I'll come back to real time and look outside to see if we can see ourselves approaching the aero freighter. Getting pretty close and we're moving quite quickly, so let's look outside here. It should be right at our tail. I don't see it, but uh, this is coming up fast, so get ready to press the BRN button to eliminate all this velocity difference. And it will also circularize our orbit at the same time. <clears throat> and we'll do that at uh, 37 kilometers. That way we'll come to a stop with uh, some distance to spare. Watching the distance here, we're at 46 kilometers. Almost time to begin the burn. And burning. And I can see the lights of the aero freighter back there. And 
we also watch orbit MFD, we'll see that our orbit is becoming uh, more circular, more zeroing out our eccentricity. And our velocity will increase to match the velocity of the aero freighter. And there's the aero freighter approaching. We have 27 seconds left on the burn. We are 5,000. 5,000 uh, or 5 kilometers 4, out. 4 kilometers out. 3,000. 3 kilometers out. 2,000. 2 kilometers out. 1,900, oh. 800, 700. And there we are. The engines are stopped. And we are 620 meters from the aero freighter and our velocity we're moving away from it at 0.25, about a quarter meter per second. Rotation. Translation. So first of all, let's just zero that out. So we're now at uh, basically zero. Rotation. Rotate around so we can see the aero freighter. And we'll fix this difference in velocity here once we're facing the aero freighter. There we are. Rotate so we can see it right in front of us. And now I'll apply some forward translation. translation to zero out the velocity and to bring the velocity vector around so that it's facing the aero freighter. A little bit of lateral translation. A little bit of up down. And there we have the velocity vector right in front of us. And remember, wherever the velocity vector is facing, that's where we are going. So the velocity vector is right there. So we're headed straight toward the aero freighter. Okay, now I have to do some things that I've never done before, which is to learn how to dock with the aero freighter. It should be fairly straight, fairly simple, but I've never done it before. So we have to, first of all, get inside the aero freighter And we'll go to this cooler view. I, I really love this view of the aero freighter. I don't like virtual cockpits, but the virtual cockpit on the aero freighter is just really, really cool. It would be just absolutely amazing if you could actually do a first person walk around, you know, using like WASD controls and just walk around the bridge. It would be really neat. Unfortunately, it's not too practical to do that because of the textures and everything. So anyway, we have to open the uh, the bay doors, whatever they are on this thing. These down here, somewhere there's a door system that we have to open. Okay, systems. Okay, docking bay, that's it, open. And uh, here they are. So this will be my first docking with the aero freighter. While that's opening, I'm going to go back to the XR2. Um, actually, I think I'll wait for it to open because sometimes when you switch vessels, the animations stop. I, I know with the XR2, if you're opening like the hover doors or retro doors, and I think if you switch vessels while that's happening, uh, it stops. Actually, I know for sure, like on the docking, the docking collar of the XR2. If you open the docking collar and switch vessels while it's opening, it'll stop because I think it shuts off the APU. So I'll just a little bit of time warp to speed up that animation a little bit. And clearly it's done and it's lighting up those. Uh, that's pretty cool. Okay, and it shows here the docking bay is open. So we can switch back to the XR2. <clears throat> And we'll select the different navigation. Rotation. Translation. 
And for starters, we'll just move forward. And we've got just 400 meters to go, so we don't need to move too quickly. Uh, we will move the velocity vector down a little bit because we need to get, we need to arrive at the aero freighter below it, not in the middle of it. In this case, the HUD the, for the docking corridor isn't terribly useful. Not sure how to shut that off, but obviously we can't come back here and fly through the aero freighter, so we're gonna have to go below it and then uh, translate up into it and then go forward. Okay, I was just selecting a different nav just so I could turn off the docking corridor since it doesn't do us any good in this case. Actually, I guess I still need it for this information. So we're 300 meters out, moving it just a couple meters per second. Take a look outside just to see what that looks like. And before we get all the way over there, open the uh, start the APU, 200. and we can open the nose cone. Control K. That's a long animation. There we go. Turn the APU back off. And here shortly we will start uh, yawing the vessel around, rotating the vessel around. Rotation. Translation. One hundred. Zero out or down a bit. We don't want to go down really anymore. Seventy-five. Not really listening to the call out so much for now because first of all we have to go out past the docking ports. The docking ports up here, so we'll get farther away from it. Fifty. And then turn around. Forty. Okay, we're past the port. So now I can zero out the forward velocity. basically stopped right below the aero freighter. Rotation. Now let's turn around. That's our target. Press I to turn off that additional information for a moment. And press the home key to recenter my viewpoint. And we're just kind of watching this information over here. We still have to, still a standard docking procedure, even though we're using this cool aero freighter. But we need the red X to come into view so that we know our positioning uh, left, right, and our pitch. And then we'll need to sort of sidestep over a bit. Okay, the red X is coming into view. Okay, now we'll translation. translate a bit to the left, because obviously the aero freighter from our viewpoint is still, you know, we're below it, but we're off to the right, so we need to translate, we need to sidestep over a bit. Rotation. And I can also rotate down a little to bring the red X up to the center. There we have that. We can rotate a bit this way. And we have a bit of roll. It's not much, but you can see that the arrow here is red and it's pointing a bit off to the right. So we need to roll a bit to the right. 
and that'll turn white and face straight up like that. Translation. Now we need to translate up a little and still to the left. Okay, we're moving at about a half meter per second. I'm gonna put in a little bit of reverse translation to make sure that I'm not moving forward just yet. 30. Just gonna slow things down a little bit because I want to make sure that I don't hit anything. Of course, the orbiter doesn't detect collisions, so I wouldn't know if I was crashing into stuff or not. You can see I'm fairly close to those panels. I don't like to look at the external view. Um, I don't, you know, it's not very realistic to rely on that. But I'm kind of mainly just showing it for the video playback. I kind of feel like my wings, yeah, I guess they're not. It feels almost like the wings would be clipping those panels, but they're not. 20. Okay, now we'll zero out the left right because we've got the yaw, or we've got the left right almost where it needs to be. We need to translate up. See how it looks on the outside just because it's neat. Ooh, that's a crash. The fins hit the uh, hit the hole for sure. Ten, nine. Okay, let's eliminate the forward eight. velocity till we move up some more. Seven. And you can see what's going on there. I'm mainly showing these external views just for the sake of the video playback so you can understand what's happening. Six. Not not doing it for the sake of cheating. A little bit to the left. Okay, now we're gonna switch to control thrust only. Okay, we're just four, no, closer to five meters out, but most of that is the up-down, it looks like. A little bit of forward thrust. Rotation. Yeah, we are off. I just noticed that the X is quite a bit out at this point. Okay, so we need some left translation. Four. Translation. Rotation. Translation. Okay, our up down is good, so we can eliminate that. And we need a little bit of left translation. Rotation. Quite a bit of left translation. Translation. Everything's lined up pretty well. Let's move forward. Two. Just two meters out. Rotation. Translation. One. One meter to go.
contact. And there we have it. And we have our XR2 docked with the Aero Freighter. So now let's uh, transfer the crew. And this is also something I don't do a lot of. I don't do much with tr crew transfers and such. So let's, I think, I don't think we have to do any chamber pressurization because we're not going outside. APU offline. So that'll open the inner door. And the outer door, yeah, we don't have to pressurize Using the chamber. External O2. Okay, now, turn off the APU, and we have the external cooling, uh, well, we have cooling and oxygen coming from the aero freighter at this point, so the, the temperature is not an issue, plus we have the radiator extended. Okay, now I think we just EVA. I don't think there's like an actual way to transfer crew. I think you just EVA and then they automatically go to the other vessel. So let's do one at a time. Crew member transferred successfully. Okay, yeah, that's how you do it. I've never actually transferred crew. I've done EVAs before, but not transfers. Crew member transferred successfully. Crew member transferred. So we'll transfer crew all the member crew. transferred successfully. Crew member so transferred. Crew up. member transferred. Crew member transfer. Crew member trans. Crew member trans. Crew member transfer. Crew member transferred. Suck. Crew member transfer. Crew member transferred successfully. Crew member transferred successfully. And we have all the crew on the aero freighter now. So let's switch to the aero freighter. And if we look over here at our board, we should be able to see crew. Yeah, we've got Lee Nash and everybody from the from the XR2 on board. Okay. Let's check our systems. With all the additional crew, we have one year and three months of O2. Uh, one thing I didn't do one thing I didn't take into account was how much O2 I would need uh, when I had the crew on board. So let's look at Transax over here. And we're going to arrive at Jupiter on 58172. Let's see how long that is. Five eight one seven two. Minus today five seven three four zero. Oh, that's seven hundred forty two days. Obviously, we don't have enough locks. In my pre-planning, I obviously failed to take into consideration how much locks I would need once I had the crew transferred. It said five years uh, before the crew was transferred, and I knew that would be enough. But I totally forgot that once I transferred the crew, we're going to be using a lot more locks. So what I'm going to have to do, um, the only, if I wanted to have oxygen from Earth, I would, I would have to, you know, do another mission to bring oxygen up to the uh, aero freighter and I'm not entirely sure how to even do that if you could like use the XR5 to uh, put oxygen modules in so I'll have to save that for a different mission so in this mission we'll just have to give ourselves enough oxygen using the uh, system here so cargo compartment and we'll select the first slot and then we press the uh, browse button here to s which go which uh, goes through the different modules that are available and I think it's like number 
15 or something. Oxygen mass, that's the one we need. You can see here on the outer ring of the aero freighter, all of these uh, are empty. But every time we press add here, it adds an oxygen module. And now you can see this one is populated. So I'm going to add in a few of these. Uh, next cargo compartment add, next cargo compartment add. And you can see just every time I do that, it adds one of these. Again, if you want to be completely realistic uh, and have everything come from Earth, you should plan to have all this stuff you know, brought up from the Earth. But it's just something I didn't consider, and I don't really want to start everything over. So we'll just have to do it this way. And then in the next mission, I'll remember that whatever oxygen I have to add, I'll have to bring up. So add, add. I don't really know how many of these I'm going to need, so we'll just add in about 20 of them. Actually, what we'll do is we'll fill up uh, two rings, so that'll be 16 total. Like that. So now both of these rings are full of oxygen. And we've got plenty of DV. Like I said, the Aero Freighter has, you know, close to 100 kilometers. If we look at, uh, well, actually, I guess by the time you add in the crew, the, the weight of the XR2 and those oxygen modules, then it drops it down to about 90 kilometers per second. But by default, with just the four crew that the Aero Freighter has, and with the default amount of oxygen, it has really close to 100 kilometers. So plenty plenty of range for sure. Okay, well I'm past the 30-minute uh, point on this video, so let me go ahead and uh, save it. And let's make sure we've got transects up on one side. We do. And is there any last little bit of maintenance we want to take care of before we end this part? Um, now nah, we'll leave the bays open and we'll save that for the next part. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you didn't like it, let me know. Hit the don't like, that's fine. Um, if you like the content and you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. That way you can be notified every time I upload new Orbiter videos. I also have a Facebook page where I post all my videos, plus some additional content that you don't get to see on YouTube. Uh, things such as different pictures, various articles, and other space-related videos and content. So be sure to check that out as well. The link is in the description down below. And I will see you in the next part. Earl Freighter and then head off toward Jupiter. So let's go ahead and get jump back in and uh, get things going. F1, or rather my macro key to switch cameras. And let's unpause here. And uh, let's see. So in the, at the end of the last video, we set up our communication equipment so that we would have the frequency for the the long range uh, part of the aero freighter and then the docking port at 124 and let me just double check that real quick so vessel AR01 yeah 123 even for the transponder and 124 even for the port okay just wanted to double check to make sure that I had that right okay now according to Transex we're going to encounter the uh, aero freighter at 57340 so it's still today and that's going to be 7871, so we've got to go forward by, you know, that distance, which I'm, I'm thinking we're going to go all the way around the Earth one time, and it looks like we're going to meet up over here. Now, there's a good chance that somewhere along the way we'll want to do basically a mid-course correction of sorts. That may sound strange, since we're doing it, and we're slowly gaining on it, or I guess maybe it's gaining on us. And here, briefly, we should see the uh, dock MFD update, and yeah, there we are. So we're 800 kilometers out, and we're moving at quite a good pace. You can see the difference in our velocities is uh, 1,000, over 1,000 meters per second. And that is simply because our orbits are so different. Uh, if our the aero freighter is in a circular orbit, you can see its eccentricity is zero across the board. But our, our eccentricity is 0 0.4, so 
we have a very elliptical orbit, so our velocities are very different. Uh, our velocity is currently 3,493 meters per second, but the velocity of the aerofreighter freighter is 4,464 meters per second. So we have a very different velocity, so it's going to require you know, a braking burn that's uh, you know, going to be quite a bit, and we'll use burn time calculator to help us calculate exactly what we want to do on that. Rotation. Let's uh, rotate toward the aero freighter, although I don't think we're close to a rendezvous and we're not going to, you know, uh, Mars or something like that just yet. But since there's so much distance being covered, uh, we may actually have to do a, a, a mid-course correction as part of our rendezvous. So let me bring up Orbit MFD over here just to check things out. Projection ship, distance, PEA, APA, how we want. Frame of reference doesn't really matter, but it's currently set to EQU. Periapsis is 2,100, so we're well above the uh, surface. We don't have to worry about accidentally crashing into the uh, surface. Let's target the spacecraft, the AR-01, the aero freighter. And you can see basically its orbit, you know, this is the yellow line, and it's over here. So we're going to come around, and we've got a much lower orbit, so we're going to go very fast around the Earth and come back around. And by the time we do that, the aero freighter will have had time to come around on its own. So without further ado, let's warp time forward. Go out to 100 here, keeping an eye on the closest approach. And you can see that it's changing. And it changes, again, you know, the whole math model stuff that I've talked about so many times. Transx doesn't model multiple bodies. Um, so basically, any influence from this. Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. This video is a continuation in the series that I'm doing, going from Earth to Ganymede, one of the moons of Jupiter. So hopefully you've already seen the first part. If not, obviously, please go back and uh, watch that part first. In the last part, we took off from the Carl Sagan Space Center using the HCLV launcher to get the XR2 into orbit. And the HCLV is a very cool launcher. If you haven't checked that out, I would highly recommend it. It's a fantastic launcher uh, all around, and it's especially good for lifting uh, the XR2 up into orbit. I think that's going to be one of my uh, preferred ways of getting the XR2 into orbit these days, as opposed to you know taking off from the runway. I just kind of like using the launchers. It's pretty neat. So once we got the XR2 up into orbit, we separated from the HCLV and set up Transex so that we could rendezvous with the Aero Freighter that I already have in orbit, uh, in a very high orbit. It's about uh, 13,600 uh, kilometers, give or take, above the surface of the Earth. And we're going to rendezvous with the Air Sun, and he, and, but more so the influence from the, the Moon. That's the reason that our closest approach doesn't hold. If the uh, solar system only consisted of the Earth and our vessel, then this should, in theory, never change. But it's changing because the Moon's tugging on the Earth a bit, and the Sun has some effect as well, but it's mostly the effect of the Moon. But as we're coming around, it's coming back down, so I'm not going to worry about doing any adjustment. So we'll maybe speed things up here a bit, and the closest approach now changing a little but it may wobble in and out, so we won't, we won't worry about it, especially since it's such a low number. And we're up to 20 meters, no big deal. Going forward a bit farther. Okay, we're getting reasonably close to that time. Again, the time is going to be 7, 8, and we're at 7, 5, basically. So let's bring up VOR, VTOL. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, not VOR, VTOL, but docking. And uh, we're still a ways out. We can even switch the docking HUD at this point. Go forward a little farther. Get closer to the aero freighter. It's, again, the aero freighter is represented by that blue line. 